but we're going to get into um, making pizza now and treat to you, a treat for you today. We're going to go up top down. I'm going to make tomato sauce first. And today, I've got my bowl. Um, I'm going to grab my tomatoes. Right. And today I'm using Bianco de Napoli crushed tomato. I'm just going to pour them right into my bowl. Okay. Bianco de Napoli whole peeled tomatoes. I got them in my bowl. I'm going to add 10 grams of sea salt. I can probably do this at the end, but 10 grams to me is about like a quarter size. Boom, right? And now I'm going to do is get my hand inside the bowl to crush it by hand. And I want to make sure when I'm crushing, I'm keeping my hand like low beneath the, the sauce. Because otherwise, I'm going to make a big mess when I squirt. So I'm just literally crushing this by hand. It's really fun. This can be relieving some stress. And I'm going to keep this chunky on purpose because I kind of like that texture of my tomatoes. That's it, guys. This is my tomato sauce. It's that easy. Now, this could be my base. I could add some shaved garlic, some oregano, some you name it inside of there, but just maybe some crushed red pepper to kind of make it your own. Um, I like just the sea salt today. That's it. It's my sauce. Now, let's make let's make a pizza into the flour. Well, now. I will coat this up on both sides. You can see how pliable this is. I'm not gonna even pick it up yet. I'm just gonna like to pull it so you guys can see, because we didn't do much to this, how pliable this dough is. It's awesome. This is actually about a 280 gram ball. Made a little bit big, which I like this size. I like it puffy. I'm not doing anything. I'm just kind of pulling a little bit. It feels like a cloud. It's incredible how soft and supple this is. Like unbelievable. All right. And now I maybe want to press a little bit here. I'm being gentle again. You know what? This thing's already stretched to where I want it. I'm going to show you this side. I'm going to put some semolina flour on top. Now I'm going to take some flour, put some flour on top, just kind of wish it around, right? Now I'll do, I'm going to push my dough onto my peel, slide it on. You guys can see I've got my, my dough on top. It's not even round yet, right? Um, I'll give one last stretch. Just boom. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So before I do sauce, before I do cheese, I will give it a little stretch, right? Make sure it's sliding like a hockey puck on top. Right? I like to pinch these edges a little bit just to give it a little bit uniqueness on each bite. Like you can see, I'm kind of pulling and pinching. I'm kind of developing that like texture on the crust, which I think is really cool. Maybe a little bit more over here. I'm pressing pretty good too, kind of just pinching it up. Not beautiful, right? See my air bubbles. Now I'm gonna do is get a slide again. It's still sliding. If one area was getting stuck, I would pick up that corner and I would stick some flour underneath it. That'll prevent it from sticking, okay? That's really important, guys. This thing should not stick at all before I go close to the other. Now let's talk about, right? Spread it out. Chunky. You like it chunky, right? And less is more on top. Don't want to go heavy. I bring my sauce to the edge, but I don't go over the edge, just like life. But not a ton, you can see. You can go a little heavier than that, maybe. You know, probably a little heavier. Isn't that gorgeous? Now I'm gonna take some cheese that's been pre-shredded. This is a low moisture mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna lightly spread it on there. Amazing, right? You guys want me to go heavy on the cheese today?
I want to take it off the edges a little bit there too, if I can, right? Take it off the edges. Really pretty. Now that's not a lot, right? You have a nice roundness. Look at that shape. It's cool. In my oven, my it's been preheating for an hour at 450. I just switched my oven to broil. And what that means is I'm now going to launch it. Do I use this to launch my camera? Oh, you do? Okay. All right. Never mind. Don't do that. What's better? No, it's okay. I get, don't, don't even worry about it. You can just take this by hand if you want to. You want to do it that way? No, just do that. Do that one. Sorry. Technical. Ah. Um, my oven's now on broil. It's, uh, the, the peach is ready to go. I'm going to give it a little jiggle again. It's still sliding like a puck. This is the time to fix it. If it's stuck, now is the time to fix it. Stick your flour underneath there, okay? And then I can launch. I'm going to grab a rag. I'm going to, um, how can I do that? I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to switch the camera angle, so bear with me on this one. I'm going to try to capture this. Um, can you open this press it? Yeah, please do it. Just press it. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, and so here's the oven. You guys can see, I'm going to slide my rack out. My broiler's on. So I'm going to take my peel to the back of the steel, right? And just kind of lightly slide it off. And now I'm going to close my oven. You can see in there my broiler is on. It's red hot. You see that? And now I'm going to close it. And it's uh, on it. Um, at two minutes, I'm going to open my oven up and spin it and turn the broiler off. Because at that time, I will have enough color on top. I know this oven pretty well and I made a lot of pizzas in there. Two minutes is good for the broiler. I'll switch the broiler off. And then two minutes back on 500 convection bake to finish it. And it might be anywhere from another one to three minutes, depending on the style of pizza I'm trying to create or make and the color I want. But maybe two or three more minutes to get a really nice firm crust underneath. Um, um, great question. So uh, yeah, let's get to some questions so we get some time. Why didn't I go closer to the edge? You know what? Great question. Personal preference. Some days I might bring that sauce all the way to, to the edge. Um, for education reasons today, I don't want to dip that sauce onto my peel because then I will get stuck. And um, so I, you got to be careful with that. That's one reason I keep it close to the edge, but not over the edge. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. What temp do I preheat the oven? I am using an electric oven today. This oven has been preheating at 450 Fahrenheit for one hour. I like 450 because when I switch it to broil, my broiler goes on almost simultaneously. It goes on very fast. Whereas if I was preheating at 500 and switched to broil, it might take it up to about, um, it might take a long time for that broiler to kick in. So I've kind of tricked my oven out thinking it's not that hot. I blast the boiler on, it comes on right away. I am using um, grande cheese today. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. It's, um, I found a local source. It's mostly used in restaurants. They don't even sell commercially. Um, I had a friend who had some, so he let me borrow some. Well, keep, I should say. Um, if, let's take a look. I'm going to switch this camera back. Let's go look inside here. Let's go see what's going on. You guys can see, again, it's been about two minutes, hopefully not too much. Look at that. You see that? Isn't that awesome? I'm gonna turn my broil off and turn that off, go back to convection bay. I shouldn't keep my oven open this long because it's kind of taboo. Uh, I'm gonna go back to 500. I'll go close to 75. Okay, my broiler is now off. My pizza is looking pretty good already. The bottom not, the bottom's not there yet. It's get, it's gonna get there. Okay, I'm gonna close this up. My border should be off. And now we're gonna finish it for another two minutes. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on today. Um, so you can see that was kind of dark, maybe a little bit too dark on top. Um, I could have just moved that to the bottom steel and that would protected the top from getting too dark, but I wanna use one steel today. That's all you really need. Two steels is great if I'm making multiple pizzas. I could make you know pizza after pizza with two steels, make like 10 in like 30 minutes. It's ridiculously fast. Um, anyway, so 
Boiler's off now. Now the bottom's catching up to the top. I definitely use convection. To me, convection, it's just a fan in the back of the oven that when you turn it on, it just blows that air throughout your oven. So you get really nice, steady, even heat throughout, especially with the baking steel inside, right? The baking steel is helping that as well. <laughs> All right, so then we have preferred brand of mozzarella cheese. If I'm buying low moisture mozzarella, I usually go to Whole Foods. They have a whole milk version and I would look for that. I like whole milk versus skim milk. Some people like a blend of skim and whole. Um, just to keep things simple, I like the um, I like the whole. Do I notice a difference in the 48 over 72? Good question. Yes, I do. Um, when I go three, four days, the fermentation, the dough cooks better. It browns better. It um, tastes a little bit better. With that said, 48 hours is also very good. Um, it's, so it's, it's a micro. It does, I find, like we've done tests on this. We found like days three and four to be the sweet spot for sure, ideally. That oven's about to go off again. I'm just going to pour it out. Nice, this looks nice. I can see bottom is now cooked. Top, beautiful, unbelievable. Uh, let's go this way again. That pretty, not beautiful. It's gorgeous, guys. It's crispy. I could probably cook another minute, maybe. You got a lot of cheese on there. Um, but it's got a pretty nice finish to it. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And I might put some basil on top at the end here. If you want some basil, you know, feel free to finish it off any way you like. Just drop some on. However you, you know, new collie way, we just kind of toss it on. An abundance of basil, which is really cool. But really, that's kind of our pizza in a, not pretty, gorgeous. That's our pizza. Very proud. Got an oblong shape. shape. Wow. Man, is it beautiful. It smells amazing, too. All right, let's get to some more questions, you guys. Um, do you ever bake it first, then boil? Great question. Yes. I, when I first came out, I started to bake, then boil. It was Chris Bianco who used the baking steel for the first time at his house, which was uh, one of those moments of my life was remember, memorable for sure. Um, he introduced me to the reverse, the broil first. And the reason was because the broil um, gets that steel even hotter. So it really helps with that like oven spring and those bubbles get creation, if you will. Incredible. Um, can you please say the central milling flour type once more? Absolutely. We will follow up with this on the email. That's a great question. This is central milling, organic, all purpose, I mean, all no, high, high protein bread flour. It's, I think it's the only one. High protein bread flour in a blue bag like this, five pound bags. And it goes fast. Um, why do I have two steels heating up? So good question. I have two steels in all my ovens because it just radiates. Um, it's like a bat having a battery inside my oven. It just keeps that temperature constant. It's amazing. No matter what I'm making, if I'm making like cookies, if I'm making roasted vegetables, it's just like having um, a really, my oven regulation, the temperature regulated, perfectly almost for everything I bake. Now for me, I'm gonna do a lot of pizzas. Uh, I would, if I was making multiple pizzas in a session, I would launch this first one after two minutes, I would move it to the bottom steel, which is now got brand, it's just as hot as the top steel, it might even be hotter because it had nothing on it. I'll move it, the top one down to the bottom steel and I'll launch a new one on top. So essentially every two to three minutes, I'm pulling a pizza out of the oven and launching a new one. It's like a cycle, right? Top, bottom, out, top, bottom, out. And I can make multiple pizzas in a session, like a lot. I can't keep up having two steams. Um, great question. Okay, so I hope that answers that. Do you season the pizza steel before it's first used? I do not. We season the steels for you. Um, we like to do that work. So when you get this out of the box, it's ready to go into the oven and bake. Um, I do recommend 
I do recommend adding seasoning throughout the, the life of your steel. It's going to last forever. Give it a little TLC. I'll remove this tomorrow and clean it up, soap and water, dry it. And I might wipe a little like canola oil on there or some oil afterwards just to keep it well seasoned at all times. Can I show you the bottom of the pizza again? Absolutely. You can see the bottom. It's beautiful, crispy. Maybe could have used another maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, right? I, I like it like this too. Not super stiff. Um, do I, okay, how do I change the temp from broiler to convection with two steels? That's a good question. If I'm using two steels and I'm using the broiler, I don't change. I kind of keep that broiler firing at all times. It's going to cycle on and off. So you have to kind of watch that closely. Now, gas ovens, the boil is going to stay on mostly con constant, right? The, um, but for electric, it will cycle. So just keep an eye on it. I usually launch the broiler on and then um, I'm making two at a time. I keep it on. That's all. So you have to kind of learn. How do I maintain? Jim, great question. I struggle, man. I, uh, I have a pretty strict one slice rule now when I'm making pizza. Um, I can't say the same for bread because I, I don't really slice it. I just tear it by hand. Um, I love bread and pizza, man. I, it's worth working out for me for, uh, it's a challenge though, for sure. I clean my steel daily. Um, daily. I will, I won't clean these today because I'm going to, this is my studio. I'll be back tomorrow and I'll clean them tomorrow after they're cooled. And before I fire my oven up, um, I will clean my steels. I like to have, you know, the other thing is we're dumping flour and semolina flour when we launch onto the steel. So I take a, wa a rag, each pizza I make, and I kind of give it a quick dusting in between slices or pizzas, I should say. I hope that answers that. Wow, what a great class, you guys. I hope we answered your question. If we didn't, it's andres at bakingsteel.com. Um, answer me and ask this. What size pizza is this? Let's find out. I'm going to guess about a 10 inch pie. And it's just, I'll go over there. Like, let's go like this, see what I'm doing. Um, let's get it. It's about from center to center. It's about 11 inches. Yeah, I'd say 10 and three quarters to 11 and a quarter, depending on which angle. So the peel is 14 inches. So the pizza itself was like a 10 or 11 inch pizza, which I love. This is a good size. Thank you guys. Thank you, Patsy. Thank you, Patsy. How do I know if you're stretching it to the right size? Great question, Josh. You know what? There's no right or wrong answer. <clears throat> when I'm turning, when I'm turning it with my with my knuckles, I try to do that evenly, right? So it, it stretches evenly. Um, it just takes practice. Like I, I've done this, gosh, thousands of times now. And this one is, I don't even know what shape this is. Not even perfect, but it looks really cool. It's unique. It just takes practice. Some days I'm trying to make them really puffy so I won't stretch them big at all. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, so Darlene. Great question. Do I ever dock my dough, especially if I have a lot of toppings? I will dock my dough if I'm making bar pizza in a pan. I won't dock it if I'm making, um, because I, I want to be careful. I don't want things to seep out of the bottom if I'm going directly on my steel. So if I'm going to dock it, it's usually going into a pan. I hope that answers that. Um, oh, docking a dough is when you take, they have these dockers, dough dockers. Like, it's like almost like a, looks like a rolling pin with like spikes. And it basically puts holes in it. Like a fork would do the same thing. You do it to your pie crusts. It would do the same thing. And what that does, is it prevents the dough from like, like the air bubbles from like really expanding. It just helps keep it like flatter. If that makes sense. Um, I like, this is a 70% hydrated dough. So it's, it's, it's 70% 70, uh, 70 water to flour. That makes sense. So it's a pretty good hydration. And we will follow up with you guys on this class. You guys rock. Thank you very much for being here today, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.